Morning, everyone, and very warm welcome to uh, St. Andrews this morning on this very special occasion, uh, Mothering Sunday. Wonderful occasion uh, in, the, in the calendar year where we uh, take the opportunity to remember and give thanks uh, to mums. And it's lovely to have uh, many of you with us today and also family and other visitors. You're very welcome. Good to see you with us this morning. Also, welcome to you if you're watching uh, online. Uh, just to say that online this morning, though you'll be able to see all the service, the PowerPoints uh, are, won't be uh, available online, but everything else will be. A uh, couple of other notices before we start the service, just to say uh, this week, uh, it's the induction service for Aled uh, on Tuesday at 7 o'clock at Emmanuel. Uh, if you're able to come, do sign up. If you are able to bring a cake or make a cake, do sign up for that. If you want to take it to the church, uh, they are uh, from 3 o'clock onwards on Tuesday. The hall is open, or you can just bring it with you when you come to the service at night. Uh, our prayer meetings this Wednesday, as usual, 10.30 and uh, 7.30. And tonight we're continuing in our Bible overview, looking at numbers in Deuteronomy. Uh, we're going to begin the service by standing to sing our first hymn, Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy. Let's stand to sing. Please do be seated. As we come to give thanks today for uh, Mothering Sunday, we remember particularly that the heart of uh, family life is that of, of love and the love we receive and the love we give. And that's a picture of what it is to be a part of God's family, God our Father who loves us and gives us life and who cares for us. And uh, we begin the service with this time to bring to mind those times when we've not loved uh, as we ought to and to ask for God's forgiveness for us. Uh, I'm going to uh, lead the prayer and if we join in together the words, Lord have mercy. Let us call to mind our sin, our failure to value the love of others, and our failure to love as Christ has loved us. Your love gives us life from the moment of conception. We fail to live as your children Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good. 
we seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help. We ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Fiona. Good morning, everyone. I have a black screen here, which means does anyone know what is coming next? Can anyone guess? The puppets, yes! So we have a little boy and a little girl because it's Mother's Day and they want to talk about their mother. So Joey, can you say hello? Hello. <laughs> hello, Joey. <laughs> and Julia, can you say hello? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and over to the puppets at the end of their little puppets then they want to sing a song um, and the words are going to be on the screen so you will know the tunes if you want to help because the song's better with more people so if you would like to join in at the end and join in with the song over to the puppets hey it's mother's day today really what do we do on mother's day we celebrate because our mothers gave birth to us Huh? I thought we did that on Labour Day. We're not American. And besides, I think that's something different. Well, what are we supposed to do then on Mother's Day? We are supposed to do things that will make our mother happy. Like cook the meals, clean up, buy her things and look after her. Whoa, that's a lot of work. I don't know if I could do all that. Besides, it's not fair. What's not fair? Well, there's a Mother's Day during the year, but no Kids' Day. <laughs> I think we should have a special day just for us kids. And what would the mothers do for Kids' Day? The same thing that we do for them on Mother's Day. They'd have to uh, cook the meals, clean up, uh, buy things for us, and look after us. Joey! What? Think about it, Joey. What? Our mothers do that for us every day. Mm, yeah, you're right. So every day is a kid's day. Except for today. We get 364 days a year and our mothers get only one. Oh, we'd better make this day special then. Last year, I forgot to buy her something and she told me that I was the best present she could have. My dad says he always gets her something that she can return. <laughs> well... I don't think I'm returnable. I bet she's lost the receipt anyway. Well, we could always do a song. Hey, gang, come and help with the Mother's Day song. Yeah. If everybody had a mother that was just like mine, then everybody would be happy and things would be just fine. She makes a million millions and does the laundry too. That's why we want to wish, wish you Happy Mother's Day. She wakes up in the morning, chief for last can be. The only time she's grumpy is for a cup of coffee. She can make a cup better with nothing but a kiss. That's why we want to wish you Happy Mother's Day. She's a friend when I need one. She's always there. It's always true, that's why we want to wish you happy. 
Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> thank you, puppets. You were amazing. <laughs> and thank you, Joey and Julia, as well. Okay, we've got a song now that we often sing at Casta, which involves actions. So you don't have to do the actions, but it is a good workout early in the morning. So if any of the children want to come and help me with the actions, um, I'll show you them first. So God can do anything, anything at all. God can do anything, anything at all. Nothing is too big for him. Nothing is too small. God can do anything, anything at all. Don't put him in a box. Don't shove him in a corner. Don't you limit what he can do. Don't put him in a box. Don't shove him in a corner. Don't you limit what he can do. And it gets faster and faster and faster. <laughs> okay, so if you'd like to stand, and if it, come on, Chloe, you love being at the front. <laughs> playing super fast there. Okay, we have a quiz now. So I have spoken to seven mothers. Please, could they come and join me up here? I'm going to give each of you a number because not everybody knows your name. Okay, and I am now going to have photos of children on the screen, and you have to match the child with the mother. Okay, so first of all, we're just going to go through them slowly, and you can have a think, and then the second time round, I want you to actually guess who you think each one belongs to. So let's have photo number one. Does anybody know who they think this is? Photo number two. You have a choice of lovely ladies in front of you. Photo number three. <laughs> Photo number four. Photo number five. Photo number six. Photo number seven. 
and photo number eight. Okay, so if we go back to photo number one, please. Who do we think this is? Number three. And who is the child? Josh, please come and wish your mum a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> okay, photo number two. Who do we think this is? I heard number seven. Any advance on seven? Please, can you step forward if it's you? <laughs> Chloe, please come and wish your mum a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> number three number five and Sam isn't here so I'm going to pick on Sophia please can you come and wish um, Ruth a happy Mother's Day <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one. Do we know who this is? Is a vote for number two? Any other votes? One. Could the real mother please stand forward? <laughs> and what's your son's name, Kay? That's Matt. Okay, and Matt's not here, so I will have um, Ollie. Can you come and give um, Kay a bunch of flowers for Happy Mother's Day, please? <laughs> okay, the next photo. It's not, you can now tell the ladies of the daffodils have already been chosen, so the quiz is getting easier. Who is this mighty man? I hear a four. Any advance on four? Can the real mother please step forward? <laughs> And Tim is here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Next photo. We've got two here. Who do you think this is? Is it number six? Catherine, would you like to come and wish Grandma a happy Mother's Day? <laughs> so that leaves two left, I think. Okay, two, two photos. Who is this? Well, it's a bit obvious now, isn't it? <laughs> Number two. Who shall we choose, Francis? Zachary, can you come and wish Francis a happy Mother's Day? No, Kennedy? Come together. Kennedy's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so we have one more who is the final picture it is Emily Emily come and wish your mother a happy mother's day <laughs> Thank you, and a big clap for all my willing volunteers. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> and happy Mother's Day to everyone.
Okay, now we're going to have the Bible reading, which Emily's going to do for us, but I've also um, willingly cajoled some ch um, children into helping. So if, you are, if you've already been asked, or even if you haven't been asked, if you come up now and we'll do the Bible story together. So if we all just stand round with your lanyard so everyone can see who you are before we start acting. <laughs> we have one of the disciples coming, yes? <laughs> Turn around, Ali. We have Jesus, the most important character. Uh, we need, does we have, need one more person? No, but we need, can we have someone to do? You can be a bridegroom, Josh. <laughs> okay, so if everyone comes over here to start with. Yes. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 80 to 120 liters. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize <laughs> where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink but you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. They stayed there for a few days. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. I'm guessing that squash was too strong, Chloe, for the desired colour. <laughs> I wanted to make it look like wine, so I think I made it too strong. Okay, we're going to sing again in a minute, but just to say, while Mark is preaching this morning, I've got some colouring sheets at the back. If any of the children want to come up with me um, and just do a spot of colouring while Mark's um, preaching this morning. So the, ch the song we have chosen just now is Water You Turned Into Wine. How appropriate. <laughs>
please do uh, take a seat. Thank you for everybody who's uh, helped us out this morning. Uh, it's been great. Uh, I've got some quotes here about the things that mums uh, say about being mums. Uh, I don't want to sleep like a baby. I want to sleep like my husband. Uh, when asked, can he have this? With the first baby, we say, is it organic and homemade? To the second baby, he can have anything except alcohol and drugs. Whoever wrote, I'm easy, like Sunday mornings, didn't have kids. Uh, what else we got? When my kids act up in public, I like to yell, what will I tell your, wait till I tell your mum, and then pretend they're not mine. The majority of my diet is made up of foods that my kids didn't finish. And a particular favorite, good mums let you lick the cake mixer. Great mums switch it off first. Uh, so that's some of the things, uh, quotes from mothers about motherhood. Uh, then some quotes about things we say to our mums. I'm hungry, I'm cold, I'm hot, can I have, I want to watch, where are you, can you ask dad, can you help me, he hurt me, she hurt me, I want to go there, when are we? Why are we? Why can't we? Things we say to dad. Where's mum? Uh, well, thinking about things we say to our mums, I wonder what you made of what Jesus says to his mum in our reading. Uh, the reading we just heard from uh, John's Gospel, uh, Jesus is at a wedding with his mother and his friends and family, and they run out of wine. Now, that would have been a, a major calamity uh, in a small village. Uh, it was the kind of thing that had been talked about for years. Do you remember uh, when Jack and Susie got married, and uh, they ran out of wine, and the bar was dry? It was awful. All you could drink all night was tea. Uh, what a terrible evening. Worst wedding ever. Uh, this is a kind of minor crisis. But Mary, Jesus' mother, immediately comes to Jesus and tells him uh, they've got no wine. To which Jesus replies, woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. Woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. What do you make of that? Uh, firstly, it seems a bit strange. Run out of wine. Why do you involve me? My hour has not come. And secondly, it even seems a bit rude. Uh, if my mum had come to me and said, Mark, we've run out of milk. Could you just pop down the shops and, and get us some? And I'd said, woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. I'd have got a clip round the ear. Uh, stop being so daft and go and get some milk. Uh, what's going on here? Why, why is Jesus saying this? Is he, is he being rude uh, to his mum? Well, no. In fact, the Bible has a lot to say about uh, the importance of how we are to our parents. Only he gave us Ten Commandments. One of them is honor your father and mother. Very important in the Bible how we are towards our mums and dads. But it does need a bit of explaining. Firstly, note here, this was a crisis. And it's interesting that Mary immediately turns to Jesus. His other brothers and sisters were there. She doesn't go to them. She goes to Jesus. Uh, whatever the problem is, or whatever the situation, whatever's gone wrong, Mary knows, I know who to go to. She goes straight to Jesus, and as we'll see, she was dead right to do that. And you know, if all we took away from this passage this morning was uh, that that's, that's something to do. When you hit a problem, when things go wrong, go to Jesus. 
Well, that wouldn't be a bad thing to take away from the service this morning. Whatever problem you face right now in your life, whatever difficulty, whatever's gone wrong, just go straight to Jesus. Oh, Mary does that. And she goes straight to Jesus. She tells him they have no more wine. And he gives her this very strange answer. Woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. Come back that, to that in a moment. But notice Mary's response. She doesn't get cross. She doesn't give him a clip around the ear. Doesn't think he's been rude. Rather, she then turns to the servants and says, just do whatever he tells you. Okay. Uh, she's learned... I don't always understand everything Jesus says, but I do know that if anyone can do anything, he can. So just do what he says, whatever it is. And then, as we've just seen wonderfully acted out for us, something amazing happened. Jesus tells them to fill six stone water jars with water. Now, our buckets here this morning actually are quite small. These jars could hold 80 to 120 liters, 20 to 30 gallons. You're talking about maybe something like 800 bottles. Okay, massive. And he says, fill it with water and then take it to the master of the banquet to taste. And as he does so, the master goes to taste it. And lo and behold, it's miraculously turned into wine. The master of the banquet has no idea what just happened. He assumes it's all the doing of the bridegroom. But the bridegroom, in fact, is completely oblivious to what's going on. And not only are these water jars now filled with wine, he tastes the wine and he's amazed. Why? Well, because it's the best wine. He said, did you pick that up in the reading? He says to the bridegroom, wow, normally uh, at a banquet like this, everybody serves the best wine first. Why? Well, after they had a few drinks, you can then give them the cheap stuff. They'll be too drunk to notice. That's what he's saying. But you've done it the other way around. The wine you're serving up now, it's, it's just the best wonderful wine. You've saved the best wine until now. So what was that about? Was Jesus being rude? Why did he say, my hour has not yet come? Why did he turn gallons of water into wonderful wine? Firstly, when he said to his mother, woman, why do you involve me? That doesn't quite mean what it sounds like. It's more a sense of my dear woman. It's not a cold uh, word. It's more gentle. It's not harsh. But why is he called Mary woman and not mother because again, I don't know if you pick this up this is the very first of Jesus miracles in other words this is the very beginning of his public ministry and he's signaling something by it he's grown up as a loving and obedient son with his mother in Nazareth now he's beginning his public ministry now he's beginning to do the work of his heavenly father and not that of his earthly parents and he's gently letting Mary know, from now on, mother, something's changed. I'm now beginning my earthly mission that my Father in heaven has sent me to accomplish. I'm no longer just an obedient son at home in Nazareth. Secondly, six stone water jars for ceremonial washing turn into gallons of wine. These water jars were used for washing, that is, People use them to wash themselves so they might be ceremonially or ritually clean. It's like it's a way of trying to get ourselves clean before God. Problem was, of course, these jars couldn't do that. Because all they could do is wash somebody outwardly, not inwardly. They could make somebody clean on the outside, but they had no power to change somebody or make somebody clean on the inside. Religious, rit religious rituals and ceremonies and washing with water don't actually wash away our guilt or our shame. But Jesus uses these ceremonial jars and turns water into wine, pointing to the fact he has come to do what religious rituals can never do. He has come to cleanse us, to wash away all our wrongs, our guilt, and our shame. And not only, though, can he cleanse us and wash away all our wrongs, he's come to give us new life. This is the best wine. It's life in all its fullness. But how? Well, he says, my hour has not yet come. What on earth does that mean? Well, it's very strange when you first read it. But as you read on in John's gospel, Jesus says it a number of times through the gospel. My hour's not yet come. My hour's not yet come. My hour's not yet come. Until finally we get near the end and he says, 
Now my hour has come. And what's he talking about? He's talking about his death on the cross. That's his hour. His death on the cross. And why does he call it his hour? Well, because that's the whole point of his coming to earth. This is the time, the hour that he has come for to give up his life to death on the cross. And throughout the whole of his ministry, as Jesus now starts his public ministry, his mind is always aware he's he- the clock is ticking and he's heading towards this hour when he's going to give up his life for us by dying on the cross. Now here, something has gone badly wrong at a wedding and his mother comes to him for help to sort it out and Jesus does. But what he's really saying to her is, I've actually come to do something much bigger than to fix or to put right something that's gone wrong at a wedding. I've actually come to fix, to put right a world that has gone badly wrong and to help fix people who are badly messed up. And That's why I've come and that's my hour, but it's not yet arrived. I haven't come to put right a broken wedding, but to put right a broken world. I've come to do what ceremonial water jars can never do, to make people really clean, inside and out, to cleanse us from within, not just to remove outward stains, but our inner guilt and shame. And then finally, he turned water into the best wine, because it's a picture of what he's come to do for us, to give to us, the best wine, to give to us the best life. Uh, Time and again in the Bible, pictures of what God will do for us in Jesus is a picture of a feast and a celebration and a banquet and a party. It's a picture of life that we long for, we get snatches of, but never fully get in this life. Jesus is saying, that's what I've come to give. Jesus turns water into wine that tastes so good That means this feast, this celebration is transformed from a disaster to a glorious celebration. And that's a picture of the real truth that Jesus has come to transform this world that is so messed up into a glorious new creation. But notice, this as we close, the master didn't know that the water had been turned into wine until when? Until he tasted it. And then he was blown away. Wow. This is the best wine. And you won't know how good it is until you taste it. And the Bible says to us, taste and see that the Lord is good. That's what he offers us in Jesus, the best wine. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and grace to us in the Lord Jesus. Thank you that you came uh, even here to help a situation that had gone badly wrong, as you so often do in our lives. But even more, you came to put right a world that's gone wrong, and our lives that are in need of help. And Lord Jesus, you came to make us properly right with God and to give us the life that we've been created for, life in all its fullness. We pray that we might indeed taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. In a moment, Jill's going to come and lead us in prayer. Before we do that, before she does that, a, a, a prayer, a special prayer for today, for Mothering Sunday. Let's pray. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let's keep keep praying. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for making us part of your family, the church. And as part of your church, we belong to you and to each other as brothers and sisters. 
And on this Mothering Sunday, thank you for mothers and for all the joy and challenge of family life. Please be with those who are grieving because they have no mother. Be close to those who are struggling because they have no children. Be near to those who are sad because they are apart from those they love. We pray also for those who are ill or in hospital. Surround them with your tender care. Give strength to those who are in pain and hold the weak in your arms of love. Give hope and patience to those who are recovering. Amen. Dear God, look with mercy on those who are running from danger, trying to find a safe place to live, those who are homeless and hungry and afraid. Inspire generosity and compassion in all our hearts. Strengthen and bless those who work to bring them aid and guide the nations of the world towards justice and peace for all people. Father, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, help us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen. And now let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Uh, we're now going to, uh, in a moment, stand and sing our closing hymn. But as we're doing that, uh, we've also got some uh, flowers to give out to all the ladies in the church and uh, Fiona do you need any helpers okay brilliant okay. great thank you okay let's stand to sing uh, our closing song you're the word of God the father from before the world began
Please do take a seat. Uh, thank you so much uh, for all the helpers this morning, and thank you for those who put the flowers together. Uh, that's wonderful. I, I gather it's also somebody's birthday today. Uh, is that right? It is. Yes. Debbie's birthday. Just to check. Anybody else's birthday? <laughs> Hate to miss that. Debbie's birthday. Happy birthday, Debbie. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Debbie. Happy birthday to you. Speech. No, <laughs> uh, so that's the end of our service. Please do stay if you're able to, to enjoy tea and coffee after the service. Uh, and just to say, that's the invitation of the Bible. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And it's our... Uh, longing our aim our desire every week as it were that Jesus is available for us to come and taste and see church isn't just for people who believe in Jesus church is is also for people who don't because it's the place to come and hear about him and think about it and discuss it and ask questions and find out more that we might as the people did at that uh, wedding discover that he comes to turn water into wine in, in our lives so you're very welcome every week Uh, Let me close with the blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen.